I, I get it, expansion, growth. Uh, yeah. I've noticed that yeah. my old house, because I've moved, that my old house is now a storage shed. And, and I get it, you know, times change, you know. But I keep wondering what I forgot there. And then after all this time, I wonder if I could ever get any of it back. I wrote, the, one of the first poems I wrote um, when I moved to Texas, I've been here less than a year, Yeah. is about this, it's called Earth Was Crying, and because John says to me, oh, this is a semi-arid area, and it's going to be, you know, deserty, blah, 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 and mm -hmm. so I had to write this. I'm going to do two sad ones and then I'm going to sing a song about Capella because everybody else is singing. Why not? Not fair. Why not? <laughs> so this is a slow sad one, short, called Earth Was Crying. As my footsteps fell to these parched patches of desert land, the arid air heaved heavy. Which is when the earth exhaled and cried as it rained nearly daily for months. When it wasn't raining, the sky hid us from the sun by blanketing this tortured town in a gray haze. After I arrived, the earth was crying. Though I try, the earth, it must have known that all my tears were not enough to replenish this earth alone. Yeah, it does. This was an effect of really sad, so I don't know what to call it, but this is an older piece that um, is true. And I'll just leave it at that. This is a poem called Andrew Hedinger. I never really liked you. You never revealed yourself to me, and why would you? You, who never had anyone. You, who always had the bad breaks. Everyone looked at you as different. Where would you have learned to trust? Who would you have learned it from? I never really liked you. I met you through a friend and he explained to me that multiple sclerosis left you with a slight limp and a faint lisp. Faint under the surface, but there, traces of something that no one would ever know of you well enough to fully understand. I never really liked you. You never revealed yourself to me, and I never wanted you to. You scared me too much. You played with physical ailments. You with a limp in your walk. You with a patch over your eye. You who stared at me always for just a bit too long. They told me that the patch was from eye surgery that, with complications, and now you had to cover up your shame, cover up someone else's mistakes, cover up a wrong you didn't commit, cover a problem that wasn't of your own doing. The problems were never of your own doing, were they? I heard these stories, and I thought that it was sad. I heard these stories and thought you had to be a pillar of strength. And then I saw you drink, straight from the bottle, 15-year-old Chianti. And I saw you smash your hand into your living room wall. This was how you lived. The house you lived in was littered with trash. Why bother to clean it up anyway? It distracted you from the holes in the wall, the drunken furniture from drunken, the broken furniture from drunken fits. This was how you reacted to life, to the world. You didn't know any better. This was how you coped. I never really liked you. 
You would come home from work and tell us about a woman who was beautiful and smart and liked you, but she wasn't quite smart enough. And I thought, we believe anything if we tell ourselves enough. We will weave these fantasies to get through the days. I never really liked you. Every time you talked to me, you always leaned a little too close. So I stayed away from the house, noted that those whom you called friends did the same. I asked my friend why he bothered to stay in touch, and he said to me, but he has no friends. This is how I thought of you, a man who has dealt a bad hand, a man who couldn't fight the demons that were handed to him. And with that, I put you in, out of my mind, relegated you to the ranks of the inconsequential. You were reduced to a sliver of my youth. I received a letter recently, a letter from someone who knew you, someone who wanted me to tell my friend that they read in the newspaper that you hanged yourself. Your brother died in an electrical accident, and after the funeral, you went to the train station. Instead of leaving this town, you went to a small room and left us forever. Strangers had to find you. The police had to search the records to identify your body. The newspaper described you as having health problems, but you knew it was more than that and I was asked to deliver the message to my friend. The funeral had already passed. You were already in the ground. There was no way he could say goodbye. I shouldn't have to be the one to tell him this. No one should. No one deserved to tell him. He was the only one who tried to care. I never really liked you. No one did. But when I had to tell my friend, I knew his pain. I knew he wanted to be better. I knew he thought that you were too young to die. I knew that he felt guilty for not calling you. He knew it shouldn't have been this way. We all knew it. I never really liked you, but now I can't get you out of my mind. You haunt me for all the people we've forgotten in our lives. I don't like what you've done. I don't like you quitting. I don't like you dying, not giving us, giving us a chance to love you or hate you or ignore you more. My friend still doesn't know where your grave is. I'd like to find it for him and take him to you. Let him know that you did have a friend out there. Bring you a drink, maybe. A fitting nightcap to mark your departure, to commemorate a life filled with liquor, violence, pain, and death. I never really liked you, but maybe we could get together at some old cemetery, sit on your gravestone, share a drink with the dead, laugh at the injustices of life when we're surrounded by death. Maybe then we'd understand your pain for one brief moment. And remember, the moments will always regret. And just so that you know, my friend um, was a man in Illinois who moved to Texas when a friend of this man happened to see this poem. And he said, I'm a friend of his, and, and I know where a cemetery is if you're ever coming by this way. So John and I, when I had to do book working there, I went there, we brought some beer, I read the poem at the gravesite with this guy there, and right. he had me. It wasn't the same because it wasn't my friend, but, right. yeah. but yeah, and I, and I poured some into his grave so that he could have some too. Yes. Nice. You know, it's just like, I have to say I'm going to have to do this. And and unless you want to come up with a bass for this, I have an acoustic song. I was I am. I'm waiting for, and I, and I want, and I'm, you're not going to do this, but I, I've always envisioned a bass. Going, bum, 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 but I have no idea how it would go, and I can't tell you what to do. Be but, but this is a this is a poem that I wrote for, because I was going to set it up for a song. And, and I... Don't have music for it. This is called Why. Mm -hmm. Why? Oh, okay. Oh, now he knows what it is. So you should have uh, the music or something. Here we go. Why do you tell me all to pieces? Why are you so far away? 
I cannot stand to take the pain. I will do it anyway. Cause I have been trapped by the things that you do. I cannot see why I've fallen for you. I cannot live so I will give in. I cannot fight so I let you win. Say. We can be together, say that you will be mine, stay and make my dreams come true tonight, stay until the end of time. I've been trapped by the things that you do, I cannot see why I'm falling for you, I cannot live so I will give in, I cannot fight so I'll let you win. Now I feel so lonely, hey, it's something I can bear, yeah, I think I can take you on, yeah, I'll take you anywhere. I've been trapped by the things that you do, I cannot see why I've fallen for you, I cannot live so I will give in, I cannot fight so I'll let you win.